So back to the control panel. Really struggle to get these connectors off here, these two. So rather than force them off, chopped off the, uh, got the power turned off obviously and checked it. So I just chopped off where the variable resistor was, it was there, where it says R4. See I've got the little legs just poking through, so I'm just going to desolder those and uh, put a new one on. Okay, so this is the one that I've just taken off the fridge side of the circuit board, the control board, which it says is a 47 K023M. This is my replacement one, which I've bought. The size is identical. The pitch is identical. The one this one looks different is because I've chopped the legs off just to get it off the circuit board and desolder it more easily. And then this one has written on it. You can't see it because it's really difficult to see, but it says on it 47. K907M. So it says that it's still a 47K, which is the main thing. Just 023M for the original 907M for this one. Who knows what that means? So, what we're going to do is we're going to check the resistance. So, we're going to get. We're going to check the resistance at different positions of the slider of the potentiometer. Okay, so I'm going to use the uh, resistance setting on my field piece SC680 meter. I've got the two crocodile clips on the end here. And then I'm going to see what the difference is between these two here. So I did some readings last night of the new one. And it said that on full counterclockwise, which is all the way over to the left, we got basically a short circuit, just short of one ohm between A to S. And if you look here, that's how it relates there. So A is that pin, mm -hmm. S is the back pin, which is the slider one, and E is the one on the right. So just to prove that, we should have just pretty much a short circuit between A and S between the back pin and between A which is the front left so we got 0 0.6, 0 0.63 of an ohm which is pretty much a short circuit so what we should have is the same thing with the old one but we know that we weren't getting it very reliably when we were all the way over to the left so I've put this fully counterclockwise and we'll see what reading we get between the back pin and the front left. We should get something like a something similar to what we got there. So if we look at the meter now, it's registering all over the place. So this thing isn't very reliable. Now if I push it over to the left and hold it, we're not getting at all consistent results, which is why I'm saying there's something wrong with this variable resistor. So we'll take it off that. I'm just going to move it round a bit to there. First of all, we'll have a look at what we get from A to E. This should be a fixed resistance of about 47K. We've actually got 59K. Can you see that? 59K there. That's across from A to E. Now the tolerance of this, of the new one certainly is 20%, which means you can go up to 56K. And this thing's jumping all over the place, which is part of the problem. So if I adjust the slider, it shouldn't make any difference to the resistance. There, now we've got about 47K. So 
there's something very wrong with this. Okay, we'll pop it back on between A and S. I've got 140 all over the place readings. So I'm going to move this all the way fully clockwise to see if I can get it to be a short circuit. It wants to. This is what it should be to turn the fridge off. If you look at the reading, it's all over the place. If I take it all the way across to fully clockwise, on the new one I get 50 ohms, on this one I've got 63 kilo ohms as opposed to 50. What we'll do now is we'll try from E, which is the right hand one here, and pop that onto the middle one, the slider. We'll put it fully clockwise. So we're on the new one, we get about we get a short circuit. On this one we don't. We get about six kilo ohms. If I turn this over to the left, turn it back counterclockwise. Starting to behave itself now. About 21k in the middle. Getting higher and higher. Working its way up to 47k, which is what we'd expect. And then all the way over. It's not, not ideal. So I'm going to change this one. I'll just do the fridge one first and put this new potentiometer on and see if the fridge starts behaving then. Last thing we're just going to try, just to confirm. What do we get across A to E? I've got 57 kilo ohms, so it's out of spec. It's not much out of spec. And similarly, from A to S, I cannot get it to be a short circuit like it should be. Okay, that's it for now. We're going to go and fit this to the fridge. All right, so we've got minus 21 and a half for the freezer, minus 1.3. Bottom left-hand side drawer of the fridge. The unit is satisfied. Hence, it's cold. This charge is pretty cold. Compressor's still warm from when it was on. It's only warm, so it's been turned off for a while bit of water in the pan so it's happy currently got the fridge set on maximum cold you can feel it coming out the freezer at the moment is set on the eye care setting this is the cold setting it should be for the fridge got the freezer sensor down in there, and the one for the other one at the back. Seems pretty happy. So what I'm going to do now is change the fridge setting down from max, which it's currently on now, to we'll go for there. It's kind of. No, we won't. We'll go for, for there. It's not quite holiday mode. We'll see how that gets on. So about that position. Probably turn on in a bit because just open the door and let all the heat in. Right, so just replace the freezer potentiometer. Turn it on. 
10 minutes ago or so. And uh, the press is now kicked in. Suction line is ice cold. Ice, ice cold. So it was cold. Get a nice cold suction line coming back to it. Frost it up. Suction line. On this. Not even up. I've been messing around with it on and off. So now I've got fridge setting underneath there on Ica. Freezer setting on Ica. We started off with minus 18 in the freezer, 17.1 at the top of the fridge, which was still about four and a half, five degrees at the bottom of the fridge in that left hand side drawer, even though we have the door open for about 15, 20 minutes. We'll see how it gets on. Expect this, uh, this suction line here to warm up pretty quickly. Frosting up, discharge coming out nice and warm. And we'll just watch the temperatures and expect the fridge to come down. Expect the freezer to come down, and what we'll do is we'll monitor it just on the eye care settings and see what we get. It's like the mid position. We can do with three sensors to see what we get at the top of the fridge, in one of those vegetable drawers at the bottom of the fridge and also in the freezer. But for the moment we're just going to look at sensor one, which is the middle one, which is top of the fridge. Sensor two, which is the top one on here, which is the top drawer of the freezer. It's going to take a while to down in temp certainly the fridge. Okay it's the 16th of July and since yesterday soldered on the new potentiometer onto the fridge control on the hot point FF200LG I think it is. This is the one I took off and the one I videoed yesterday which had readings all over the place. So that's the one from yesterday and now I've taken off this one which is the right hand side one which is for the freezer control so what I'm going to do now is test this on the bench and see what sort of readings we get from this one as well so I'm going to try and clip onto it, I might have to use the probes because I've snipped off a fair bit so that I could snip it off desolder the legs out of the circuit board clear the holes with a solder sucker and then uh, solder it back on again um, not very easy to do and really difficult to get the connectors off the control PCB so I did it stood on a ladder um, while it was still connected to the fridge, had the fridge turned off obviously. So what we should have on this, and again we've got pin A, pin E, and then the back one is pin S. From A to E we should have about 47 kilo ohms. I'm just going to swap these over to these connectors here. So I'm still on the field piece SC680. I'm going to take these off because I haven't got enough. So I'm on ohms. What I'll do is just pop that on there, it's magnetic, and I've touched my probes. See, we've got zero ohms zeroed out nicely. So, first of all, down here, we're going to go across from A to E, see what we read. And if you look at that, if you look at what the meter says, 74 kilo ohms, this is supposed to be a 47k3. 47,000 ohms and so this reading from A to E of 73, 74 kilo ohms is well out of spec because as we saw yesterday 20% should be 37.6k up to 56.4k that's 20% plus or minus a 47k that's the tolerance we expect from these so this is well out of spec we'll measure the 
resistance when we're fully over to the left, which should be the off position for the freezer. And this should be approximately zero ohms, short circuit. And it's not got 14K there. Now, if I turn this a little bit more to the left, I'll try and hold it at the same time. So I've got 14K, that's where it should be a short circuit. I have to really turn it to try and get a short circuit. This is to turn the freezer off. It doesn't want to do it anyway, look. So this is one of the problems, the freezer didn't want to turn off at all. Because it should be seeing zero volts, sorry, zero volts, zero ohms there, it should be a short circuit. Now because I turn it to the right, resistance should be going up as it is. When it gets all the way fully clockwise, should read about 47 kilo ohms, and we're reading nearly 70 kilo ohms. And if we look at from S to E, about 9k. And again, when this is fully over clockwise, we should get. short circuit nope now, I did manage to get the freezer to turn or the whole unit to turn off on the freezer control with this one before I hacked it out of the machine I'm going to try again and see if I take it all the way back counterclockwise all the way to the left so it's all the way over so this should be the lowest resistance between a and S. And I've still got 14k, it's no wonder it didn't want to turn off. One thing we haven't looked at is has it got the same markings as this one? It has. 47k023m, that's the left hand fridge, this is the right hand freezer. But if we look back again at the one for the fridge, we could do A to S. And yesterday, certainly, we got, we could get zero ohms, but it had to be right over to the left there. Now look, we're on anywhere between 25, 30 ohms. They're nearly a short circuit, but I'm really forcing that over to the left. Shouldn't have to do that. So let's see if we can get that with this one as well, this freezer one. I know it will turn off because I've had the machine turned off using it. That's how I cleared the initial fault. 14K. I'm going to twiddle this far left as possible, see if I can get it to there. It takes a lot. Now we're on a short circuit. 0.15 of an ohm, call that, that's a direct short. You have to really have the control over to do it. And the new ones, as we saw yesterday, do it easily enough. So this one for the freezer is even worse than the one for the fridge. So it's no wonder that the temperature wasn't mapping particularly well. So I've got new, two new ones of these on the circuit board downstairs on the fridge. Left hand one for the fridge control, right hand one for the freezer. And I'm just letting the unit come down in temperature once it's satisfied. I'm going to monitor the temperature overnight and see what happens when it's on the minimum fridge setting, middle, eye care fridge setting, maximum one, and same for the freezer and see if it starts doing what it should be doing. So for future reference, if you want to change these yourself, you can get them from far now. And the part, the order code number is 312 8533 and excuse the writing all over it but it's an Amphenol P-I-H-E-R PIA sensors and controls and its part number is PT Papa Tango 15 November Hotel 05 473 A 2020 PM S you can either get one with PM 
Or if you look across at this one here, this one doesn't have a PM. They're both exactly the same thing. All that happens is this one here, PM, means that when you get it, the slider, so here, it's set in the middle setting rather than at the initial setting. It doesn't make any difference to the operation. It's kind of along the lines where if you were fitting the mass produced on a factory line and you wanted it set in the middle, you'd buy the PM one. So either of them are going to cost a whopping £1.11 plus fat each. So they're not a lot to change. So including delivery, which costs more than the parts, you're looking at, I don't know, maybe about £10 to change them both over and then get your fridge and freezer temperatures working properly again. So it's the 15 series rather than the 10 series. Difference being that for the 15 one, it's 15 millimeters is the pitch across and it's 250 power rating. And for the 10 mil across, it's 150 power rating. So this is the important thing here, this part number here, and that order code from Farnell. Or this one, which is 312-8534. So that's it. We'll monitor the temperature and we'll come back with some temperature results tomorrow.